ASCP continues to tell the story of the behind-the-scenes work that medical laboratories are undertaking during the COVID-19 pandemic with a stop at Cleveland Clinic. The leaders of this renowned medical center share why pathologists and laboratory professionals are the unsung heroes in the fight against COVID-19, facilitating vital laboratory testing for the coronavirus. I'm Dr. Blair Holiday. I'm the CEO of the American Society for Clinical Pathology, and it's my privilege today to be with the chairman of the Cleveland Clinic Laboratory Institute here in Cleveland, Ohio, and that is Dr. Brian Rubin. Dr. Rubin, please tell us what's happening within your facilities. Uh, good morning, Blair. So um, we are in the middle of an unprecedented um, epidemic with COVID-19 here in the United States, and Interestingly, this has put pathology front and center because we're the testers. We're the guys who perform laboratory tests, and we do this every day. We do it for a variety of diseases, not just COVID-19. We're experts at doing this, and, um, but we've now been pushed into the forefront because people want to know, do I have this virus that's spreading around the United States and the world? And so about a week ago, March 2nd to be precise, the FDA and CDC cleared us to do laboratory testing at all of our different institutions. And the response has been overwhelming immediately. Everybody rolled up their sleeves. Here at the Cleveland Clinic, we said, how can we roll this out as fast as possible? To us, that meant three shifts a day, working as hard as we could to launch the CDC tests, which a lot of labs are, are using. And we were able to launch last Thursday and we've been testing ever since. We're trying to get more efficient. We're trying, we, we're of course, we're doing this in a clean environment. It's very high confidence, high reliability. And um, we're testing as many people as we can and trying to increase the number on, on a daily basis. Tell me about your lab team. Tell me about the heroes that are working, as you said, round the clock, three shifts in order to bring this test to bear for our patients so they don't have to wait, so there doesn't have to be a backlog, so there can be an opportunity for patients to know the results. And tell me about what they're doing for our patients in this country, and particularly within your facility. Yeah, so I, I mean, localized testing is very important. So when you can, a lot of patients get confused about why it takes one group four days to roll out a test versus another group 12 or 24 hours. And really it has to do with the transportation. So if you can do the test locally, that means that the turnaround time is going to be way faster because you don't have to transport the specimens. Um, that's really the big advantage to doing local testing. So our group, these are just laboratory technologists and technicians and ordinary people in the lab who have taken it upon themselves to make this the number one mission. We shifted, really, our focus um, a week ago and said this is our number one mission right now number one priority is to launch COVID testing and provide as much testing as possible during this time of crisis. So it's just all the normal technicians and technologists, prim primarily in molecular pathology, but in fact, everybody across our laboratory enterprise has called and said, okay, I'm not in molecular pathology today, but do you need help? How can we help? And so we've, the pre-analytics becomes very important. Just getting all the swabs together and sorting them, triaging them, who's most important to be tested. And so these can be done by other laboratory personnel and we're leveraging all the people we have in our institute to do that. The post-analytic process of reporting can be taken over by people who are not in molecular microbiology. So molecular microbiology is doing as much testing and we're trying to fine tune the process so that they can really test and not have to worry about other things. We're leveraging everybody in our institute. We've had people who aren't even in our institute or researchers, for instance, in the Learner Research Institute who've called up and said, hey, I'm not gonna be doing much lab work over the next couple of weeks, how can I help? So it's all about teamwork, it's all about understanding what that team looks like. Ordinary people, ordinary technologists just rolling up their sleeves and doing an amazing job. So it's my privilege to introduce you to Dr. Gary Prokoff here at the Cleveland Clinic. Dr. Prokoff, tell us your role and your activities here within the institution. So I'm one of the vice chairs of pathology. Really my role for our conversation today is the director of the virology laboratory. In your opinion, um, what policy changes would you recommend to the FDA such that in the future, you're, we have the ability to be more nimble, move faster, quicker to support our patient care, um, and obviously 
it's the patients that are demanding these tests. Um, we are simply going to be the, uh, the vector to provide it to them. But what, what, what would you recommend? If you were sitting in the seat as the, as the commissioner of the FDA, what would be your recommendation? How would you allow, like you said, to unleash the laboratory algorithm so that we can move faster and more nimbly? I, I think the FDA wants to do this. Uh, I, I will say uh, with ASCP, we visited the FDA and it was clear that they want to allow laboratories that they know can do this type of testing to do this type of testing. So I would say going forward in preparation for the next unknown, it would be a step forward to give all of those laboratories that have already proven their abilities a green light early, as early as they need because they have a proven track record and then we would not be as far behind. In your opinion, do you think this country is going to be facing a similar scenario where the supply chain is going to be difficult to, to pro procure and that you as an organization are going to have a difficult time providing the appropriate ventilators, the personal protective equipment, what's necessary to protect yourself as well as your scientists in the laboratory and more importantly to provide seamless patient care? Do you see that as an issue? This is, this is a potential issue. This is one area where the government and public health uh, could, could be helpful, mm -hmm. is actually looking ahead. Uh, th there's been one mistake with the testing, let's not make mistakes with personal pe protective equipment and ventilators. So we need to predict worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. I will say uh, that all of the interventions that are underway to flatten the curve are extremely important because when the curve's flattened, then you can spread out your use of ventilators and personal protective equipment over a longer period of time and preserve the supply. So what we're doing is correct, but we have to plan for the worst. Um, Dr. Prokhoff, pathologists, physicians, laboratory scientists, which are non-physician scientists who typically have either bachelor's, master's, or PhDs, these are the team, these are the individuals who are the unsung heroes, aren't they? These are the people who are out there working their hearts off. They're day in, day out to provide scientific, credible solutions to epidemics like this, right? Tell me how you feel and what you've seen about these unsung heroes. And more importantly, now for the first time, the public is seeing us as the entry portal to what they need. Tell us about your team and tell us why you're so proud of your team. Well, they're really an amazing team, I have to tell you. Not only are they brilliant, so for anyone interested in a science career, they often don't know this is a path to a, a wonderful career. Uh, and on top of it, they are just as dedicated to patient care as any nurse in the operating room or any um, uh, emergency department physician. So. Uh, we, ha we have a mantra at the Cleveland Clinic to act as a unit, and we really do. We act as, uh, as a unit on all levels. So MDs, PhDs, medical laboratory scientists, we all have different roles, and uh, we, we, we really try to do all the heavy lifting together. And so it's just an amazing, amazing group that works well together. Uh, I, I think they're all very tired right now because they've been uh, you know, working double shifts in order to bring these results to our patients, but I know they would have it no other way.